everyone, bringing you the Mannequin of the Month for August 2019 today. We're going to be looking at this, which is a setup representing uh, privates in uh, 5 RAR, 5th Battalion Royal Australian Regiment, in Vietnam in 1966. Based directly off the photograph, uh, but only showing the front of the webbing in the photograph, so other uh, parts of this are taken from inference and from other photographs. So I've tried to put together a relatively typical um, setup for 5 RAR at this time. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more of why this is, I reckon this is fairly specifically 5th Royal Australian Regiment practice uh, as we look through the equipment. Uh, those of you who've seen my previous videos and know a little bit about what interests me will know that I love uh, equipment setups where there's a whole host of different components brought together from different countries, uh, productions uh, of equipment, and that's exactly what we have here, particularly the web equipment. But we'll start at the top and work down as we usually do. At the top here we have a British made jungle hat. Um, these were commonly worn by Australian troops early on in Vietnam. They were worn right the way through and you still see them in the 1970s and even in the 80s, but by that point Australian made hats were also being issued and obviously they would become more predominant as these wore out. Uh, but these were originally uh, procured from British stocks because obviously Australian troops had also been fighting in Malaya and then in Borneo to a degree as well or in the Malayan emergency, the continuing uh, war in the Far East that British and Commonwealth forces were involved with uh, and therefore they had access to British stocks of, of uniform web equipment and so forth. Uh, the shirt itself is a relatively early production Australian uh, green shirt. Uh, they were known as greens, the uniform. Uh, they had a similar crossover belt trouser system to the British uh, jungle uniform of the time period. The shirt was different. It was made of uh, cotton drill, as you can see. Uh, these small brown buttons, these would be changed later on to something more similar to the American uh, type button. Uh, they were a bit smaller. But uh, as I say, this is a fairly early production example. And then the web equipment, which is a mishmash of uh, M1956 American equipment, Australian made versions thereof, and at the front here we have two basic pouches from the 1937 pattern British Commonwealth web equipment. These are both Canadian made and as you can see they've been dyed green. They would have been in Australian stocks, so these aren't something that have been taken from British stocks or anything like that. These are uh, in Australian stocks of 1937 pattern. For some reason, uh, Canada seems to have provided a lot of web equipment to Australia or Australia procured a lot of Canadian made equipment um, uh, in terms of webbing. They did produce their own as well and British stuff ended up out there as well. Uh, some Indian made too, I believe, but uh, a lot of Canadian pouches certainly uh, turn up in Australia and they, they were quite predominant in Australian stocks. Uh, so you do see them a lot in period photographs. Uh, and as I say, that's the, uh, the basic pouches at the front there. Um, we'll have a look at the other components on the web equipment in a minute, but this is particularly interesting as I say. Uh, it seems to be, looking at photographs, um, it seems to be that this is very typical for uh, 5RAR at this time. I've seen quite a few photographs of 5RAR who are wearing their pouches in this manner. And that is to say that the front straps of the uh, suspenders, in American terminology because of course it is from an American equipment set, uh, have had the hooks removed and then the straps have been looped through the buckle uh, to support the pouches in the prescribed manner as was intended for 1937 pattern. You often see these slit and hung low on the belt or even with a piece of cord attaching them to the, the loop on the suspenders to keep them from sagging forwards. Sometimes just worn without any form of support on the hooks high and they actually sag out away from the body. All sorts of different ways but this as I say is quite in 1966 there's quite a few photographs purportedly of uh, Fifth Royal Australian Regiment wearing um, these, uh, wearing the pouches in this manner. So they've obviously modified the suspenders in order to wear them in, in basically the way they're intended to be worn with 1937 pattern. The belt, of course, is also American M1956, uh, but we'll have a look round uh, now. We'll move the mannequin round and we can have a look at the other components which are worn on the on the equipment set here. Looking at the left hip here, we can see an, an early Australian produced water bottle carrier. Uh, this is in, in a heavy canvas, a bit heavier than the, light, the lighter weight canvas that was used later on. And we also have in here the, the dark green colour uh, indicates this is an, an Australian made water bottle, um, pl plastic uh, water bottle canteen in American terminology. I can't remember off the top of my head whether the Australians referred to it as a canteen at this time or not, but uh, that's in there. The, uh, certain parts of this uh, equipment, the Australian uh, production modified uh, equipment uh, came into into use through the 1960s. Uh, so 
at this period, not all of the components were in production. The water bottles certainly were, and I believe early runs of the water bottle carrier were as well. So we have one of those on the side here. Looking around here a little bit further, uh, I'll actually just move the mannequin around slightly further so we can more easily see this. We can see here a Golok pattern machete, and this is a British made machete in a British sheath. Uh, again, uh, the Australians had access to uh, British, some British stores uh, out in the Far East. And in 1965, 1966, you do see these being carried uh, on occasion. Um, obviously, Australia would then introduce their own version of the Golok pattern machete in a sheath that had a slightly different uh, method of uh, hanging off the, the belt and also had a, a pocket on the outside to take a sharpening stone. Uh, that's been looked at in previous videos looking at Australian modified uh, M1956 uh, web equipment. So I'll link to that in the corner of the video if you're interested to see the Australian version of this. Uh, we'll just move this slightly further around again. You can see on the back here the standard American M1956 uh, butt pack, bum pack to Australians, uh, the field pack obviously containing uh, rations and so forth. The photograph I've based this on is a short patrol, a relatively short patrol, but they're still carrying quite a, a decent water load and presumably this would carry spare socks, rations and so forth, things that you would need for a day of patrolling, a uh, day of patrol work, but obviously not carrying a heavy, heavy enough load to uh, sustain them in the field for any longer than that really. So uh, the field pack on the back there, and we'll move this right round now and have a look at the other hip. On the right hip here, we can see two early uh, production American M1956 uh, canteen covers uh, with water bottles in them, with canteens in them. Another Australian plastic example here, as I say, these were produced from 1965, so they start to turn up quite early on. But in 1966, uh, you still see the metal M1910, the American made M1910 bottles in use as well alongside these predominant, but well, these are the only ones you really see in use in 1965. In 1966, these have already come into service and are uh, supplementing them. And then progressively the metal bottles will fall out of use. But in 66, there's still photographs showing these in use. So you've got a mix of that there. Obviously, uh, American produced M1956, uh, the standard equipment is all marked with a US stamp, which is faded on this one. Uh, some uh, M1956 was produced in America, uh, so American made M1956 was produced for Australia, uh, and that was stamped with a broad arrow and a DD marking, uh, so would have had an arrow on the front here and DD. Uh, men who were issued with um, the standard American produced equipment, because obviously the supplies of uh, equipment specifically made for Australia didn't meet demand. Uh, they ended up getting equipment marked with the US. Uh, it was to um, not to the uh, the taste of uh, a lot of men. Uh, you don't want to be uh, mistaken for a septic. So this bottle cover here, this canteen cover here, has had a little bit of a, an amendment added to the uh, US designator uh, so that there can be no confusion over the uh, national identity of the soldier involved. Um, so there we are. I say two canteens on this side, one on the other, a decent water load. Uh, and that's basically it. So there we are. That's a look at this mannequin uh, representing um, a private in 5 RAR in Vietnam in 1966. As I say, still fairly early uh, in Australia's involvement in Vietnam. Uh, they'd only just moved on to having the task force. This was 5 RAR's first uh, deployment in country, uh, first tour of duty. Uh, obviously, they'd only, I say they'd only just moved on to having the Australian, the independent Australian task force. So Australia's involvement was developing at this time and the equipment uh, is not yet up to spec per se. Um, so there's a lot of improvisation going on, which is fascinating, which is, I love this sort of setup, as I've said before. I really like it when uh, different uh, equipment sets are uh, used together. So I do hope you found that interesting. Um, as I always say, if you have and you like my other uploads as well, then you might consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've already subscribed, do make sure you've hit the little bell, the little notification button down the bottom there, which will alert you when I upload future videos. Uh, there's also a Facebook and an Instagram page, which I always plug at the end of my videos. Uh, there are links to both of those in the description. Check them out, the various photographs on here. There'll be more detailed photographs of this on the Facebook and Instagram pages. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, until next time, bye for now.